Hey everybody, it's Saturday, September 19th, and it is time for my sketchbook review. Um, this week's been pretty rough. Uh, I was in the ER yesterday, not like in the ER, I was working in the ER, so I'm super exhausted and I've got a terrible stress headache as a result. I didn't have one last night, but I was super tired, but I've got one this morning. Um, so, it's not going to be as thrilling of a sketchbook review video as I was hoping, but maybe once I get into it, my mind will change. I'm just kind of like, blah, I gotta get my video done, because it's not their fault that I don't feel... I mean, I feel fine, I just have a terrible headache. But it's okay, it's alright, everything's gonna be great. So, sketchbook. So we left off with my lame attempts at Scrooge McDuck over here. And I did an Amy as her duck form and as kind of um trying to do like not hick I don't want to say hick but like I don't know put her in a pair of daisy dukes and and uh what are those uh oh it's not a crop top because crop tops are full shirts they're just short I don't know bustier whatever and I gave her some jewelry and stuff like that but I was just kind of having fun with having her like in a swinging motion so yeah and I ended up inking it so super happy with it looks pretty nice the inking came out pretty good there's not too many noticeable mistakes on my end so and then I did a picture of Amy bothering Lydia because Amy and Lydia are friends like they're actually pretty good friends and Lydia I mean, for the kind of girl that Amy is, um, it's just kind of fun that her and Lydia are such good friends. And uh, when Lydia needs to talk to her, she always has to go to the strip club because that's where Amy works and that's where she is 90% of the time. And like, in order for them to have conversations, uh, she has to, Amy is like, has to give Lydia a lap dance just to make it look like she's working. She doesn't want to get in trouble because, you know, if you're not working, you're not working. So. And then poor Lydia, she's like, I'm just here for advice. And Amy's like, well, you got to get a lap dance if you want to talk to me right now. But yeah, but Amy works a lot. I've pretty much determined that, like, she has a second home at the strip club just because, like, she has a place she lives and it's with, like, four other people. And she doesn't necessarily like it in that apartment sort of house that they rent. So she's usually at work. She has another part-time job, too as a cashier at a grocery store. And then I did a picture of Mama Piper and Baby Lydia taking a nap together underneath a blanket and I think it's super cute because it just is. Look at them. They're both so sleepy. <sighs> I'm not sleepy but let's tell you what I've been yawning at. I got into a Disney kick. I was trying to draw Ariel over here and it just wasn't happening so I got mad and to the next page and I was drawing Jasmine and I was like oh it's a more stylized Jasmine towards my style more and I was like man doesn't look like Jasmine so I kind of got frustrated again but I like the little bird look at that little bird oh look at that terrible shadow oh. and then I was like all right you know I'll just practice Jasmine so I kept drawing her over and over and over again and I got all my little blue shavings and the cracks of my pages and it, this one turned out really good but I tend to do really good with profile pictures so that doesn't shock me this one was kind of like eh but I wanted to draw Jasmine with a little birdie again and then I went back to drawing Piper but because I switched I was trying to switch my style over to a more Disney style like everything looks childish for the next few pages and that bugs me that's why I don't like messing with styles too much because it pulls me away from mine but uh, I got Piper right here, kind of wearing a hoodie, and this is just going to be Piper and whatever dude I was going to draw her with, I just kind of gave up because I was like, nope, not going to draw that. Really, his head is just way too big anyway. And I went back to drawing more Piper, and this one's more closer to my style. Still a little bit too small, still a little bit too childish looking. But again, in that big hoodie, I like her in big clothing. And then I was like, all right, screw it. We're going to go back to what was working. And <clears throat> I doodled Amy and Cassie. And uh, Amy's like, catches Cassie outside the strip club. She's like, hey, why don't you come in and have some fun with me? And Cassie's like, no, 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 no. Poor Cassie. 
But Cassie actually has a very exotic look and I know that that's what would draw Amy to her. And I imagine that they're friends as well because Amy is such good friends with Lydia. But I think that the way that Amy looks is probably very off-putting to... Um, well, it was initially off-putting to Lydia, but Lydia kind of just kind of grew to know her a little bit better. But I don't know how um, how long it would take for uh, Cassie to warm up to Amy, but eventually I'm sure that they would because, you know, Amy likes the lady. Or Well, Amy, Amy is actually heterosexual, but she will basically hit on anybody because her job sort of requires it because a lot of girls go to strip clubs and that's just a fact so they usually go and here's a funny thing because I've talked to girls about it before and a lot of them are like oh well we go to strip clubs to see how to make our men happy and I'm like your men are happy because they're going to strip clubs to look at ladies that aren't you and that's typically it but, you know, if they want to go with their husbands or their boyfriends or whatever, then whatever. It's like, you you know, more power to you if, if it's something you want to do to make your relationship stronger. Personally, I've just never known it to turn out good. So, but because of that, she has female clients as well. Because, you know, women can like women too. She just has to be accepting of everyone. It's just part of the, part of the package. Um... But yeah, but she catches uh, Cassie outside and she's like, come on in. And I'm sure that she drags her in too. And the girls all make her feel at home and blah, blah, blah. So it's good times, guys. It's good times. Then I drew Nega Piper. And she's just finished eating. And she's looking her hand. And she's adorable. And then I drew Shuten Doji from um, Ronin Warriors. Uh, we knew him as Anubis. That's the American name he was given. Because we're talking 80s anime, guys. They changed all the names over to English names so kids wouldn't be confused. You know the drill. They dumbed it down. But, um, yeah. When I, once we got internet, because I watched Ronin Warriors when I was a kid. So, by the time I grew up, I, I didn't even get to see all the episodes. I actually have them all, but I can't bring myself to watch it. Because then I'm like, well, once I finish watching the missing episodes, then... It's over for me, so part of me is like really hesitant to watch it. But um, um, what was I gonna say? No, I watched it as a kid. But once we got internet, when I was around 15 or 16 years old, I like did so much research. And this was back in the day of like mailing lists, so I would get like emails of like art and things like that of um the uh, original stuff. And I was always confused because they always had Japanese names. I'm like, what is going on? Why do they have Japanese names? Because I was stupid. And I was like, oh, they changed the names when they brought it over to America. America. So, yeah. But he was always one of my favorites. Shuten, Shuten Doji or Anubis. He was always one of my favorites. Probably because he, like, woke up and turned. You know, and I'm, I'm not worried about spoilers because y'all, the anime has been out since like 1980. So if you haven't, well, not 1980, more like 1989 or so. But if y'all haven't seen it by now, then that's your issue. But, um, and his eyebrows. He had like these really cool eyebrows. And I really liked his eyebrows. I was like, yes, eyebrows. But yeah, he was one of my favorites. And his American voice actor had like this really like... I don't know. It was an annoying voice, but I, when I was younger, I was like, I like his voice. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And I was drawing um, Piper carrying Lydia. Human form, Piper carrying human form, Lydia. And then I just kind of gave up. I think I, um, I was about ready to go to bed. This was... Well, let me see. Okay. This was um, the night I wasn't feeling good because I came down with something um, Monday night, Tuesday morning. And I'd gone to the doctor and I came home and I was, I was put on some antibiotics. And I think what it was, was I was just, I had such a massive infection that I was unaware of, like a sinus infection of some kind, that when I took my antibiotics, my body started fighting back, that it just exhausted me again. So I took my medicine and I ended up falling asleep instead of studying. And when I woke up, I was like, I only had a couple hours until I had to go to bed anyway. So I was like, well, whatever, I'm just going to draw. So I did. So these are sick doodles, guys. <clears throat> but I wasn't really sick. I was just super tired. I never actually got sick. Well, I did. 
but it was like borderline sick. I never was running a fever or anything, but I think it's because I caught it so early because I, I don't have time to mess around. I, can't, I don't have time to get sick. So if I think I'm getting sick and I can tell if it's an infection or not, which I could, then I went and I had to get it taken care of like ASAP. Plus I had a white spot on my tonsil and that's pretty indicative of a sinus, throat, tonsil, something infection or strep, but they tested me for strep and it didn't come back positive. So either I killed it before it could develop in the strep or I um, just had a really bad um, sinus infection. Either way, it's taking care of now. I'm just still kind of exhausted because I'm still taking antibiotics. So my body is still fighting things and things are getting wiped out whether I want them to or not. But I haven't taken antibiotics in seven years. So what do we... anyway, enough about being sick. Um, so everyone's been drawing their gemsonas. And I, I won't lie, I'm not a big Steven Universe fan. But I like the idea of the characters being based on gems. So I was like, well, you know... I'll play my hand at this. And then I came up with this monstrosity. I'm like, ugh, look at the head versus that body height. But I went with um, my birthstone, oh, which is, well, depends. I've got like three, it, it, but I went with Zircon because Zircon kind of sounds like more evil. And I imagine that I would have an evil gemstone. So whatever. But yeah, so I doodled her and I kind of gave her like, I was like, oh, she's kind of girly. So she gets a skirt. Yeah. And then I was doing a little bit more duck work, but this was about the time I was petering out. I needed to go to bed, so I did. And then I woke up the next morning and then I started here. So. Um, yeah, so I was doing more duck work. I did a little bit more detailed, a better looking picture of Zircon. <coughs> Zircon. And I kind of detailed things out, but I think this is it for her. I think I'm done. And I was working on some human jade. Um, my biggest thing with the mask is like I can't seem to get it to fit her face right anymore. It kind of looks like a thong on her head and I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted, guys. So I'm going to um, probably re rework the mask or something or figure something out to make it look a little bit better. And then I got like into a Four Seasons kick and I was doing these Thursday night before I went to bed because um, I had clinical very early in the morning but I had to stay up until 10 o'clock because I had to take my antibiotic at 10 so I'm like on a 6 to 10 schedule with it and you know so I drew um fall piper because so, she just her hair coloration was the only reason why I chose her for fall she's more of a um summer person to me but I went with fall with her and um I just kind of gave her like all these wispies and I gave her like, if I'd finished this, I'd have done like a sort of leaf tattoo design going up her arm here and here. It would have been cute. And then she has like a little leaf comb holding her hair back. And I actually am very happy with the face on this. It's very paper -esque. And then I did Amy as Winter. Um, she kind of has bitch face going on here, but whatever. And uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Give her a little fur hat and it goes back. And then I was going to have some sort of a clasp in the front, but then I forgot. And I was like, well, I'm not going to draw it in now. But um, I'd have had some sort of clasp or something in the front. And then it would have actually been a cape. But I forget, so whatever. But, and again, I only chose Amy for her hair color because it's a that aqua color. But, you know, it kind of fits in with the blue motif of winter. And then I did Lydia as spring because... Lydia, in my opinion, is just 110% spring. She's young, she's innocent, she's very, like, fresh. So I went with her, plus her curls and her big hair just worked. And I gave her kind of a flower motif. And then I didn't have anybody for, um, summer. Because I used Piper for, um, fall. And then there's a messed up, I had that, messed up, uh, sketch real quick and then I did this as part of Miss Venomous Cupcakes uh Friday um Friday what's it called prompt video where she gives you a prompt and you draw it and this week I mean I was only half in half out because I was so tired I was in the ER working for like almost I only took like a half an hour lunch so seven and a half hours I was in the ER working and 
it, it's one thing, but the stress of working in there was what really got to me because you never know what's going to come through that door. I mean, you get a little bit of warning from the paramedics as they call things in, but just because they call it in doesn't mean that they exactly know what's going on. They can only give you what they know. So when they, when people actually show up, is it really a stroke or is it a heart attack or is it a is it actually a kid who kind of looks like an adult? Were they found with people? Are they homeless? Do they need other stuff before they can even get the treatment for what they're being brought in for? Is it a psych patient? And it was just all, it was like this big basket of stuff. And to some people that would be really exciting, but to me it is super stressful. I like to know what I'm getting into. I like to be prepared mentally and physically, which is why I need to find a nursing practice that's basically the same thing every day which is why I'm really looking into dialysis because it is scheduled it is um you get time with your patients and they're not in such a state usually and I say usually because when people skip dialysis two or three times they're not in a good way when they come to the hospital but they're usually in an okay state and they usually have family with them helping them. So those, all those factors really add up to me and it makes for a more positive experience, usually. I can't say for sure because the second I say, oh yeah, it's always like this, there's gonna be someone who ruins it. Anyway, so back to art. Um, the motif, that, she, or not the motif, but the um, prompt that she gave was homage and a lot of people don't know this. There were three things I started out in when it came to art, three major influences. And a lot of people don't know that my classic influence has always been Alphonse Musha. Um, I don't emulate him as much as I used to. I used to always have elements of Musha in my artworks. Um, I've since stopped because he has gotten like very mainstream and very popular among all the kids. And I get tired of being called out on that. And they're like, oh, you're just copying Musha. I was like, okay, fine, you yeah, know, whatever. But I used to always have elements of his stuff in my work. Um, like the curly, the curly undetailed ends of the hair versus like the more detailed top part of the hair. He's very well known for that. He, and you know, of course, everything of his looks watercolored as well, but I used Copic, so I couldn't exactly recreate things. Um, he always used gray, like gray tones, it seemed like to um shade which i used but they faded out quite a bit too much so it didn't really work always had his ladies in um uh drapey clothing as, as opposed to like light but it was all very like sensual like his ladies and i don't yeah y'all just need to go look him up but um he always had nice Geographical backgrounds, very, he used lots of flowers, but his thing was to kind of blend everything together and block it as opposed to super detailed. Now, he had details in his flowers, but, and I mean, more detailed than what I've provided, but um, he, he tended to block them together too. And there were times where if something overlapped and then there was a hole, you would only see basically the hole with no detail separating things out, but... Yeah, so Musha was a very big influence. And I actually have a couple influences going on here because it's also very Disney-esque. So to those who recognize that, it's like, well, that's no big secret with me. Disney's always been a huge influence to me. And my third influence, which you don't really see in here, is um, uh, early 90s X-Men, which is probably bad because the anatomy was so terrible because that's when they started mass, really mass producing in the 80s and 90s, they began mass producing comic books, which is why they got so cheap. Um, because they made hundreds of thousands of copies, but it's also what started bankrupting the companies is they'd produce all these copies, and if they didn't sell, that's why sales are so important now. If they didn't sell, then the, co the company would go under because they spent all this money in production, paying the artist, paying the letters, paying the printing, and um, they would end up with 150,000 copies of something that they only sold three of. So mass production, it took away from the art form of comicking, honestly, because you can, you can go out and find copies of everything. That's why back in the 50s and the 40s, if you had like a comic that somehow your mom didn't throw away, even though you spent only 10 cents on it, these days it'd be worth millions because there aren't any copies left. There's absolutely no copies left. And it's because they only printed like 50 copies or they would only print so many copies for so many stores across the US. 
So, yeah. But comics were a huge influence, although you don't really see it here. You see it more in my sequential art. But um, I've kind of since gotten away from the Western comic styles and just kind of started developing my own. But I still am super heavily influenced by Disney, and that's overall. But I also have elements of Musha still that I would like to keep incorporated into my artwork. And I'm going to scan this because I think it turned out nice. But, yeah, that's the sketchbook review for this week. Not a whole lot. Like I said, I had a lot going on. I'm still pretty stressed. I'm waiting for... I'm just trying to get through this next seven weeks. Once I get through this next... Well, not seven weeks, but once I get through this next semester, that half semester that I'm in, things should lighten up pretty good. It'll be a lot of paperwork, but it won't be... It won't be, you know, memorizing more facts. It's not being tested on... Um, med surge anymore and I won't lie like this stuff is scary and the fact that all I've been learning to do is diagnose EKG strips for the past two almost three weeks scares me because we're being tested over so much more and after this week it's a test every single week and then we have our final and it's cumulative and then we have our exit HESI which is super cumulative and I'm terrified so anyway, um, yeah, that's it. That's the sketchbook review this week. If you guys liked what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe below. Sorry it got so long. I know that there's some rambly parts in it. Feel free to skip it if you want to. I'm not forcing anyone to do this. Watch these videos. I just want you guys to see some of the detail. Look at that. Look at that. He even got a little bit of eyeshadow in there. Look at Piper. She's so cool. I love her. Anyway, so, um... Like and subscribe, comment below, and I will see you guys in next week's sketchbook review.